Hello, everyone. My name is Gabe Paez, and I'm the founder and CEO at The Wild. I'm so excited to see you all here today at Autodesk University 2021. We know doing things virtually can sometimes feel a little bit less personal, but I think you're going to find that the next few minutes are uniquely engaging in a way that you probably haven't seen on a live stream before. So Revit is the industry leading solution for building design. Yet still, details get missed when validating a built environment from behind a 2D screen. If only we had that experience of walking the space at the very end of the project, once it's absolutely complete, we're moving through it, but we have that experience months or even years earlier while we're still in the planning phase of the project. Think about the issues we could triage, the better decisions that we could make, how much time, money, and frustration could be avoided by aligning around the experience of that space rather than an abstraction of it. This is the gap in our current capability that we have an opportunity to fill with virtual reality. This technology is now more acceptable than ever before thanks to affordable and comfortable devices like the $300 Oculus Quest 2. Today, we're going to highlight a simple and practical workflow to show you how easily you can take a Revit file into virtual reality. We're gonna bring collaborators into the BIM model from across the world to show just how easy it is to experience that work together in virtual reality. Two of the, the best ways for building teams to collaborate in VR today are with our industry leading tools, The Wild and Prospect by Iris VR. Together, both products span the entire design to construction spectrum with The Wild focusing primarily on early stage design and collaboration and Prospect for later stage coordination to construction. For today's conversation, we're specifically going to focus in on how you can use the wild to integrate directly with Revit. We'll be saving a few minutes at the end of the demo for Q&A, so please feel free to write questions into the box as you watch, and I'll try to answer as many of those at the end of the session as I can. But first, got a quick question for you. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in Portland, Oregon, but I'd love to know where you're located and what company you're repping. So go ahead and drop that in the chat. Thanks so much, and I'm gonna pass it off to AJ to walk us through the demonstration. Thanks, AJ. Well, thanks everyone for joining us, uh, our session at AU 2021. Um, on behalf of our whole organization, appreciate you carving out the time. It's not something we take for granted and hope overall uh, Autodesk University has been fantastic for you this year. Today, I'm going to talk about what multi-user collaboration can mean when you get into the VR experience, but some very simple steps and adjustments you can make within Revit to create the best multi-user collaboration experience. And whenever we're talking with our customers and they ask us, what can we do to optimize our model in Revit? There's two main suggestions we always make. One is doing some section boxing. Two is turning off any unnecessary elements or categories that may not be the prime focus for the multi-user experience itself. So let's go through each of those and bring over this conference center model into the wild. So I'm gonna turn on the section box option here, but I'm also going to, I have this in realistic view now, and we all know realistic view can sometimes slow your computer down significantly. I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to consistent colors so it'll work a little bit faster for us today. Um, so in this case, for my multi-user experience, the prime focus is the conference center itself. So there's a lot of extra topography here that I'm going to cut off, which by doing so is going to make a smoother uh, experience, especially if you're having multiple people coming together. It's not going to be pushing your machine or untethered headsets like the Oculus Quest 2 near as hard. So let me go ahead and drag in each of these turn off a little bit of the topography so really now when we get in there this will be the prime focus the conference center a little topography but not near as much as we have that will do some dramatic positive results for your in headset experience the next thing is we can turn off some unnecessary categories or elements so while these trees are nice maybe there's a few of them you know, i could turn them all off but maybe i'll just turn off a few here that uh, are again not really necessary for the meeting at hand. All right, so another good example of that is if you're just focusing on the one-to-one -one walk through and having that experience, maybe you don't need all the innards of the product, all the mechanical, the electrical, the plumbing. By turning off those categories, you will see a significant boost in your VR experience, especially great when you're bringing multiple people together. 
But once you've made the changes here in Revit and we want to push it over into the wild, we'll show up in your add-in section here. So let's just hit view in the wild. So I'm going to go ahead and create this space. I'll get into our demo team and our Autodesk 2021. I'll call this Conference Center. I'm going to hit Create Space. And now what this is doing is it's going to be porting this model from Revit into the wild. Our product does a bit of optimization in the, the background. But again, by taking just these few steps up front, you can really create a very positive, very repeatable workflow for your team. All right. So after we've gone through the process of, again, bringing in our model from Revit, then we can come right into the multi-user experience. Hey, Nick. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for meeting me in here. And, you know, there's a few very advantageous things that I think will be very helpful to you all once you bring a model into the wild to have this multi-user experience. First off, it can be very nice to start in this dollhouse view mode here where we're getting that bird's eye view perspective. We can see the representative changes we made to optimizing the model before we brought it, brought it in. But it can be very nice just to look at the model from this standpoint before we hop down in. For example, maybe we want to um, control some of the layers of this model uh, with our visibility tool and turn off the walls, for example, so we can start to really look in and just see how the pieces are coming together. Um, and then at any moment, be able to hop down in into this experience as well. And on that note, let's go ahead and uh, do so. So I will hop right down to the entrance here. Nick, if you wouldn't mind turning on those layers, thank you, sir. I will use our tool to gather everyone to me here. Perfect. So now we're down in at one-to-one -one scale. And if the heart of collaboration is about sharing experience, we also want to feel like we can stand shoulder to shoulder and have conversations no different than we would if we were actually on site or working together in an office for that matter. So I'm going to come stand shoulder to shoulder next to Nick here and start to think about the types of conversations and items that we're trying to think through when we are making design decisions. So maybe we really want to understand not only that you know, sense of scale, uh, we can take some measurements in here, we can leave markups, annotations, as Nick is going to take a quick measurement here. Okay, perfect. So 11, 11 feet. Nick, I'm really curious to understand what is the actual element and metadata that's making up this uh, balcony and this ledge up here. Great. So now we have all the lower level metadata and Revit data that came, came in. And I wanted to highlight this because for a lot of organizations, this is where a tool like this goes from the cool to the useful. It's one thing to come in, have the experience, but when we can have this lower level de detailed information, this is where we can really start to use a tool like this for coordination, issue tracking, and making decisions to understand how this uh, overall design is coming, coming together. So for a lot of organizations, this is where the tool helps them start to create some time and cost savings. And the fact that I'm standing next to Nick and I'm seeing his you know, virtual clipboard here. And likewise, he would be doing the same for anything that I'm doing. It can become a very, very powerful experience um, and very one that however people take in information, we can support that. So maybe we want to pull up the blueprint to have that right next to us as well. And maybe we also have um, you know, a drone flyover of the site. The wild makes it very, very doable to support different forms of documentation and information to help move the conversation always in the right direction. Because while I might be more video oriented, Nick might be more flat, flat 2D. So it really makes it where, again, however people are taking in this information, we can have the way to help get that point in the narrative across. 
So a lot of, uh, a lot of fun ways that multi-user collaboration can come together, starting with just simple doing some things in Revit to optimize your model to create a good headset experience. But two, thinking about the different assets you might want to bring in to really further take this multi-user experience to that next level. So with that, Nick and I will uh, throw it back over to Gabe to open up some Q&A for the group here. Thanks for joining us in Headset. Thank you, AJ, for sharing that workflow with Revit into the wild. It's so cool to see just how easy it is for AJ to meet with Nick inside of his Revit model in just a few clicks. And as I can see from our chat, we got people from all over the world here today. So just imagine how wonderful it would be to stand inside of your BIM models together and share an immersive experience. So if you'd like to try out the wild, just visit the URL right here, thewild.com au 2021, and go ahead and try it out for two weeks. See how it works for you. We're also, just as a special promotion for AU this year, we're doing a free Oculus Quest 2 plus two months free with any annual subscription to the wild as a special promotion for AU. Now we've never run a deal like that before, so, and maybe we won't again, <laughs> but now's a great time. If you're, if you're interested in trying it, go ahead and visit, um, to do a trial. And if it works for you, um, now's the time to actually jump into the wild. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a few questions for the Q&A. Um, is the model automatically scaled to fit onto the table in Dollhouse View? Lewis asked that. All right, good question, Lewis. Um, yes, when you import in from Revit, it automatically scales the, the Dollhouse uh, to, uh, sorry, it scales the tabletop so that it's right uh, in, within the bounds of the out, outmost bounds of your model. And you also have the ability to change it. You can make it larger or smaller within that mode. So you sort of have flexibility to initially get it right where you want it and then tweak it. And then of course, when you go into immersive mode, so when you teleport down into the model, you always teleport at one-to-one -one scale. So the true scale of your model as seen from Revit. Okay, another question. Does the wild include clash detection capabilities or the ability to see and modify Revit internal metadata? Great question. Um, it does does not support clash detection. It's not you're not going to like have an automated way to do that clash detection in the wild. But if it's if it's baked into the model itself, if that data is baked in, you're going to be able to see it when you bring it in. So if you detect those clashes and highlight them um, externally, they will come into the wild. You can see the metadata for the second part of your question. You can see the meta metadata. You cannot modify the metadata from within the wild. Um, Florian asked, is the Oculus Go supported? Great question. So no, simple answer, no. Um, the reason being that we've really focused on sixed off headsets. So sixed off means that you have six degrees of freedom. So the Oculus Go is a three, three degrees of freedom where you can look all around. Six degrees of freedom is where you can look all around, but you can also move all around. You can move backward, forward, side to side. You can walk around. And the reason why we feel like that is super important is the wild is really optimized for, I like to say meaningful collaboration sessions and meaningful meaning potentially a length of time where you need to be comfortable not just jumping in for a second and, and getting a snippet of time, but rather moving through the space, having a conversation inside of the space. And we wanna make sure that it's comfortable for that. And sixth off is super important for a real human-centered experience where you don't feel um, odd inside of the space because you're moving through it just as you naturally move through. In the physical world, you can move through the virtual space. So Oculus Go, no, however, all of the six off headsets, um, like the HTC Vive, the Oculus Quest, the Oculus Rift, all supported. Uh, the Pico Neo 3, another great headset, all supported in the wild. What other integrations does the wild have? So in addition to Revit, you can bring in um, content from BIM 360, which is a huge one. So all different types of content that's stored in BIM 360 or Autodesk Construction Cloud, which we gave a presentation on two days ago are all capable to bring that content inside of the wild. 
In addition to that, we've got a SketchUp integration where you can bring SketchUp files into the wild. And then there are tons of 2D and 3D files that are supported. I forget the exact number now, but um, it's 2D file types like images and um, videos, MP4s. You can also bring in OBJs, FBXs, all of those like interchange 3D file formats as well. And I guess our last question from Lewis again, how does the wild handle AR and will it work on site? So, so glad you asked. Honestly, AR is, I, I love augmented reality. The wild is truly an XR solution in that it's not just virtual reality. In the same session, you can have somebody joining inside of a space from virtual reality, augmented reality, but also desktop mode in Windows or Mac. So there's wide device support, but zeroing in on augmented reality, for those of you who don't know, augmented reality is the capability to augment your digital model onto a physical space. And so combining a physical thing with a digital thing. And this is super useful on a, on a site, on a construction site, even prior to construction on an empty plot of land, you can augment your BIM model onto the site. So you can stand there with an iPhone or iPad using one of these iOS devices, hold it in front of you, and you'll be able to see a camera view of the environment, the physical environment, but you'll be looking at your BIM model in composited in with the physical environment. And as you move through it, move through that space with your tablet, um, you'll physically move through the space. And, and in that way, you can literally do a walkthrough of the building pre-construction before you've even laid the foundation. It's just so powerful and so um, such an interesting experience. So if you're interested in that, we'd love to demo it for you. Please visit our site today and sign up for a trial and we'd love to have you. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that for today. Thank you all for joining. It was really a pleasure talking to you, answering your questions. Um, I hope to see you very soon in the wild, and I'm signing off for today. Have a great rest of your AU. Take care.